Hello and welcome everyone in our lecture series on hematology. So far we have discussed about the formation of red blood cells that is the erythropoiesis. Now in today's lecture what we'll do is we'll discuss about the formation of leukocytes. The process is known as leukopoiesis. Now you should know that leukocytes are of two types. One is the granulocyte, another one is the agranulocyte. So we have two types of uh, leukocytes, one is granulocyte and the one is agranulocyte. Now the granulocytes include, one is eosinophil, then we have the basophil, then we have the neutrophil. So there are three types in what granulocytes and we have two types of agranulocytes which include lymphocytes and monocytes. So actually leukocytes are of two types, one are granulocytes and another one are agranulocytes. In granulocytes, we have eosinophils, basophils, neutrophils, and in agranulocytes, we have lymphocytes and monocytes. Now, what we'll do is, we are going to discuss about the formation of lymphocytes in today's lecture, because we'll discuss that in the lymphatic system part, because it will be easier to correlate that in uh, the lymphatic system. But in today's lecture, what we'll do is, we'll discuss about the formation of granulocytes and the monocytes. Now in our previous lecture, we discussed about an important thing that there is a pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell and that cell divides and forms either common myeloid progenitor or the common lymphoid progenitor. Now the common lymphoid progenitor, which is also known as colony forming unit, granulocyte, erythrocyte, monocyte and megakaryocyte. So it's another name of common myeloid progenitor. Now as I told you that this cell will divide into a lineage restricted cell only in the presence of certain growth factors, like if we have the erythropoietin so if we have erythropoietin what will form will form erythrocytes if we have the thrombopoietin what will have uh, will form the platelets and if we have the granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factor will either form granulocytes or the monocytes so in today's lecture what we'll discuss is that a specific type of growth factor that is granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factor will act on the colony stimulating sorry colony forming unit granulocyte erythrocyte monocyte or megakaryocyte and will convert it into colony forming unit granulocyte monocyte so this is a growth factor granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factor and if it acts on the common myeloid progenitor it will convert it into the colony forming unit granulocyte and monocyte now there are two different things it can it can either form the colony forming unit granulocyte if there is the presence of a granulocyte colony stimulating factor and it can form the colony forming unit monocyte if there is the presence of monocyte colony stimulating factor so as simple as that now there is also an important thing that if in addition to this granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factor we also have interleukin 3 so then this common myeloid progenitor will form the colony forming unit basophil and if we have in addition to uh, interleukin 3 we also have interleukin 5 then we'll form colony forming unit eosinophil so this is very important this you should know that interleukin 5 is involved only in the formation of eosinophil this is generally asked as a question and also you should know that the interleukin 3 is involved in most of its steps and this granulocyte colony stimulating factor is not just involved in this step it's also involved in this that is the formation of monocytes why because it helps in the differentiation of monocytes as well but we are not going to discuss about the things which are very common because in medical science the common things which are very common in nature are not common in our examinations so when i'm discussing about the common things we are just discussing about the specific things that is if we have the presence of interleukin 5 then what happens we'll have the formation of colony forming unit eosinophil and if we have the form, uh, presence of only interleukin 3 then there will be the presence of or the formation of colony forming unit basophils now this colony forming unit granulocyte will not form any type of granulocyte. It will only form a specific type of granulocyte known as neutrophils. So as the name is granulocyte, you should not get confused that it will form all the types of granulocytes. That's not correct. It will only form the neutrophils. So the uh, granulocytes or the uh, myeloblasts which will be formed from the colony forming unit granulocytes will only form neutrophils, will be specified to the formation of neutrophils. Now after this, it will form a specific type of cell known as myeloblast. In fact, all the three will form myeloblast. It will form its specific myeloblast known as colony forming unit basophil myeloblast, 
for eosinophil we'll have a separate myeloblast for granulocyte we'll have a separate myeloblast but i have written a single myeloblast the reason behind this is that the myeloblast of all the types of cells or to be more specific of all granulocytes is similar so the myeloblast of all the granulocytes is similar what we have in myeloblast stage is a large cell with a large nucleus and having a basophilic staining so we have a basophilic staining stage for all the for example if it's even eosinophil then also it will be basophilic in myoblast stage so myoblast is a common stage for all the granulocytes that is myoblast will get converted into the promyeloblast now what we have in the promyeloblast stage is number first thing is this primary granules will be produced now what do we mean by primary granules these are the azeurophilic granules these primary granules are present in all the granulocytes actually granulocytes have for example if this is a granulocyte they have certain cytoplasmic granules and there are two types of granules one being the primary granule or the azeurophilic granules and the second one is the secondary granules the primary granules are similar in all the types of cells however the secondary granules that will be formed in the later stages are specific to the specific type of cell so in this stage what we'll have is we have the formation of primary granules that's also asked as a question in which stage primary granules are present and the answer is promyeloblast then this promyeloblast now the division that will take place will uh, after this division in fact we can differentiate between the three types of cells for example if from the promyeloblast we have the formation of neutrophilic myeloblast then this will have a specific type of granules that will be specific to neutrophils this will have the basophilic granules this will have the eosinophilic granules however the primary granules are similar to all of them and these are known as azeurophilic granules so azeurophilic granules or primary granules are similar to all of the cells but after this in the myelocyte stage we'll have the formation of secondary granules and those secondary granules are specific to the specific type of myeloblast for example the neutrophilic myeloblast will have neutrophilic granules in basophilic myeloblast will have the basophilic granules and in eosinophilic myeloblast will have the eosinophilic granules so this is the first stage in which we can differentiate between different types of granulocytes that's again an important question in which stage we can differentiate between different types of granulocytes then after this stage the next stage is neutrophilic metamyelo stage or basophilic metamyelo stage metamyelocyte or the eosinophilic metamyelocyte now what do i mean by metamyelocyte so in this stage we have the formation of secondary granules and the cells can be differentiated but in the metamyelo stage what happens is for example if this is a nucleus for example if this is a nucleus it will get elongated it will become like this will have an elongated nucleus and due to the elongation of nucleus the chromatin will get converted to heterochromatin so we have the formation of heterochromatin therefore from now onwards or even in this stage we won't have any kind of division because in our previous chapter also i told you that this uh, division property depends upon the nuclear characteristics for example the chromatin and if the chromatin is heterochromatin that means non functional which also means that the cell won't divide so from the metamyelocyte stage and onwards we won't have any kind of division taking place so that's an important thing the first thing that occurs during the metamyelocyte stage is the elongation of the nucleus the chromatin becomes heterochromatin and the division the property of division is prohibited from now onwards so that is similar in this also we'll have the elongation of the nucleus in this also we'll have the elongation of nucleus and the property of dividing will be lost now there's an important thing that is specific to neutrophils neutrophils first form a stage known as band cell now what do we mean by band cell the band cell means in this type of cell the nucleus will still be elongated and will get converted into a horseshoe shaped nucleus like this in fact it's a u kind of a thing so we'll have a this kind of nucleus so in this stage what we'll have is we'll have a horseshoe shaped nucleus so we'll have a horseshoe shaped nucleus in the band cell stage and finally in the neutrophilic stage we'll have the 3 to 5 lobed nucleus so and finally in the neutrophilic stage we'll have 3 to 5 lobed nucleus multi lobed nucleus therefore the name polymorphic nuclear neutrophils
So that's an important thing and you should know the band cell is specific to neutrophil development only. And now if we discuss about the development of the basophil, after the metamyelocyte it will directly get converted into the basophil and the shape of the nucleus will be either V-shaped or the S-shaped. In fact, the elongation process will further, the nucleus will further elongate and we'll have the formation of this V-shaped or S-shaped nucleus. And in the eosinophilic stage, what will happen is the nucleus will become bilobed or trilobed. So we have a bilobed or trilobed nucleus in the eosinophilic stage. And there's an important thing, the pan cell stage is only present or it's only specific to neutrophils. Now that was everything uh, regarding the formation of uh, various types of uh, granulocytes. We discussed about the formation of neutrophils, basophils and eosinophils. Now we are left with one single thing, that is the formation of uh, monocytes. Now what will happen is, as I told you that the colony forming unit granulocyte monocyte in the presence of a monocyte colony stimulating factor, we are converting into the colony stimulating factor monocyte. And that will divide and will form monoblast. And then we will have the pro-monoblast. You know this is the precursor cell for every type of cell. For example, for RBCs we have the pro-erythroblast. Likewise for monocytes we have the pro-monoblast. And finally it will directly form the monocytes, the mature monocytes. So we discussed about the formation of granulocytes and as well as the monocytes. Now in our next chapter what we'll do is we'll discuss about the formation of hemoglobin that's a very important chapter so this is it for the hemopoiesis portion and we'll proceed in our next lecture with the formation of hemopoiesis. Now guys if you like my work please subscribe to my channel because I will be uploading videos on every alternative day so please stay tuned thank you everyone and have a nice day.